You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Wow, that was a pretty good interview. I had uh, Bernie Thompson on there. I was supposed to have Stephen Lang. He should be calling. He's an automotive journalist that talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly of cars. He was, uh, I'm, I, he should be calling in a minute now, but he was talking about police cars. Roswell, Georgia is selling like 15, 20 police cars up there. And he was giving some of the reasons you might be a good investment if you want to buy, you know, talking about how many people you can stack in the back seat, you know real tight together you get three in the back seat and two in the front seat and can hope and you can call you can haul 5,000 pounds with these police interceptors I'm thinking maybe that uh, Sheriff McKeith might want to go to Roswell Georgia and buy some of their old police cars up there for price you know because the same cars he's got that anyway try to keep the budget down because it gets rather expensive every time you're trying to uh, run any business or trying to run any public facility out there trying to keep maintain upkeep and drive upkeep on cars even at my shop just, uh, I think we spend over 2000 I want to say it's like $2,000 a month for software subscriptions. And when I say software subscriptions, that's for Hyundai, Kia, Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Honda, you name it, we got it. The only one I don't have software subscriptions to, I got all of them except Mercedes and BMW. I've got Volvo, I've got Land Rover, I've got, I've got those. I just don't want Mercedes and BMW. Uh, just way, 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 way too expensive for me to get uh, to purchase to have on hand. I can purchase them individually if I have to, but, uh, and that's what I try to tell people. If you're going to a shop, if you read my article today in the paper talking about computer reflashes, a lot of people don't realize their cars can be fixed by just doing moving electrons from the internet down, uh, d downloading the electrons into your computer, into your car's computer. And that's how we fix cars today. I get cars that come in all the time with shift quality problems, you know, harsh shifting, uh, uh, delayed engagement, uh, something like that. But most of today's cars, transmissions are electronically controlled. When you move that lever from park to drive, you're not moving really anything mechanically. You're actually moving electrical contacts that are telling it that you're in gear. So, you know, if the electrical contacts aren't working right or there's not a good signal there or it's an intermittent signal or it's, or it's, or it's something's not right, it can cause drivability problems, delayed engagements, harsh downshifts, just a plethora of problems out there that can be avoided by having it checked out. So I tell people before your car gets out of warranty, please have your manufacturer, the dealership who's under warranty, ask them to check for any updates on your vehicle. And you might want to say, you know, uh, I may be having an up, uh, upshift problem, a downshift problem, a harsh shift, uh, uh, something, something that may seem okay to you, but just doesn't seem normal, and maybe a little out of out of normal. Maybe you've got a, uh, a friend's car has got a similar car, and maybe you notice it shifts a little different. Please have them check on that before it becomes out of warranty, because that part's free. After that, you have to pay for it once it comes out of warranty. So anyway, I'm going to shift gears here. I'm going to go to Joe Izuzu. No, that's not his name. It's Joe with an Izuzu Trooper. Do you remember Joe Izuzu, Joe? Do you remember hello, him? J hello, Joe. Hello, J hello, hello, James. <laughs> you remember Joe Izuzu? Yeah, it's yeah. not pronounced Izuzu. It's Izuzu. Izuzu. Okay, Izuzu. The I is separate, right? I mean, the I is silent. Well, it's gone. It's gone. And uh, the reason I'm calling is... When you turn the key on, all the warning lights come on. Right. Now, my son was driving it home from Orlando a week ago. Right. And the rear seal went. The rear engine seal off the... Uh, rear, rear engine seal, ooh. ran out of oil, ooh. locked up the engine. <sighs> now, the first thing I did when I went to see it was I turned the key on to see if that red orange uh, oil light was on and it was on All right so that means that warning system is working All right and he swears upside and down that that red light did not come on and i know i've got him to a point with cars where when he sees a red light he stops what well, i ain't gonna get involved in family disputes on that but I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the light was on but but the reason that probably blew the rear seal out is the pcv system's probably clogged up uh, it's only I can think of excessive back pressure or whatever, because that that engine it was a three five engine there. That's a pretty. I've never seen them blow a seal out on the rear end. I mean on the rear seal. I've never seen. Them and blow I out. put a new I put a new PCV valve in it about a year ago. I think if I remember right. I just know that that's the biggest thing that blows them out is PCV valves or using the wrong oil 
where the oil doesn't have the you know bulk oil, oil that doesn't have all the additives it's supposed to have, and their can cause that as well, causes the oil to to uh, evaporate because of the heat. What were we talking about, Emory? Uh, well, I don't know what oil he's running. She, if you want to talk, you got to talk in the microphone. It's kind of hard. Um, but she's asking what kind of oil you're running. But I will say that more than likely the light was on when it happened. He just didn't pay any attention to it. And, and, uh, and that's probably what happened. I, it, it, it's, it's like putting closing the barn door after the horse is out. The engine's gone. So you have two choices, replace the engine or replace the car. So well, I've already, I've already sold the car. So that's, well, let me move on to a quick sure. other question, okay? Now, I went and towed it home. Great, okay. Now, I used the tow dolly, but I did not disconnect the transmission, the, the drive, drive shaft. shaft. Yeah. Do you have to do that on a regular automatic? How far did you drive? Oh, I don't know. 200 miles? 100 miles? No, maybe 100 miles. Well, it's not. they don't recommend it, but I have seen people, so long as it's in neutral, they don't, they don't normally have a problem. On, is that one a rear-wheel drive? Four-wheel drive. Okay, you had it disconnected so the fr front wheels didn't turn. You had it on a tow dolly and you were towing right. by the back wheels. In most cases, if you put the transfer case and everything in neutral, you won't have a problem. Yeah, it was. Okay, and I, I don't think you're going to have a problem. But like you said, you sold the car, so it's a moot point. Yeah, okay, one more cool, real quick question. All right, got, I got to get Steven uh, on here. Uh, all right, I... I got in. I'm looking at Nissans. Have they had any trouble with their timing change? Yes, they always do. If you don't use full synthetic oil, you're going to kick yourself in the butt 100,000 miles down the road. I don't care if it calls for full synthetic or not. Please use full synthetic Mobile One or Amsoil, or you will be buying a timing chain when it runs out of warranty. That, that's uh, no, it'll be a used one, but okay. You, I, I use synthetic anyway, so yeah. it won't make any difference. So if you got one right now, open the oil cap, look for sludge. If you don't see any sludge, go ahead and, and start using full synthetic to save what you got because the timing chain tensioners and the runners, uh, the plastic are very inferior. They've updated the plastic on the timing chain runners and tensioners to keep them from rattling. Because okay, so the they're not foolproof then. Nope. Just because they have a, a timing chain, they're not full, nope. foolproof. I make a like lot a of money. I make a lot of money changing timing chains on Nissan's that people don't use full synthetic oil on. And I tell them, I tell them, I know it doesn't call for full synthetic. Ignore what it says. Use full synthetic, or I won't be putting a timing chain in there. If you do, don't. I will be putting a timing chain in there. Okay. All right. That, oh, that, that goes. Thank I gotta you, get Steve. James. All right. I'm going to get Steve over here before he goes away. Steve, we tried to get you earlier, and I'm sorry I didn't get you, but I read your article about uh, police cars in Roswell, Georgia, for sale. Tell me more about that. Well, Roswell is a nice little yuppie town between uh, Powder Springs and Atlanta, uh -huh. and the long and the short of it is that every once in a blue moon, you'll have a bunch of police cars that are auctioned off, mm -hmm. uh, and um, there's really two formats for it. The first is one where you go up to a live auction, you sit around, you look at the different cars, and you open up the hoods, and you hope and pray that you get the right one. And then some uh, some places just get a little bit tired of dealing with the public, and so what they'll do is they'll actually try to restrict the bidding mm. uh, to dealers and salvage operators only. Mm. And this will happen when they have more or less uh, what I call the eBay effect. When you have something that is of considerable value on eBay, right. and someone decides that, oh, you know, I've always wanted one of these. Oh. So they'll actually go ahead and, and buy it. And then you have to wait, the interminable wait, to actually see your money for what you're trying to sell. <laughs> right. So that's kind <laughs> of what's going on on this one, it sounds like. Exactly. And right now there's uh, about 32 cop cars on uh, gov deals mm -hmm. that have uh, bids on them anywhere from $200 to $1,200. It's about half of what, uh, actually in some cases less than half, of what they usually go for. Mm. And the bidding's going to actually end for this in uh, late Sunday. So this sounds so like insider trading going on. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, this is somebody just throwing up their hands and ah. saying, you know what, I'm tired of dealing with the public. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now if, now you said you would actually buy cars for people if they want to, because you have a dealer's license and everything. If people want to buy or interested in that, do you have a, a email address they can call you on and maybe you can work a deal out with them? I, I mean, you know, because you know a lot about cars, you know, mm -hmm. and I know you posted on Facebook that, hey, you, I can do this. So I got about two minutes left, so I figured I'd give you time to do that. Absolutely. 
Uh, feel free to email me at carselect at gmail.com. I'm, I've actually written an article about it that is on the queue on Yahoo. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a nice little jump up on that article, mm -hmm. you can feel free to just email me at carselect at gmail.com. Carselect. Car, yep. Carselect at gmail.com. Make sure people got that. All right. And exactly. And uh, long story short, I have 100% uh, positive feedback on eBay for over 12 years. And I like to have open markets. I'm a firm believer in having open markets, especially if you're the taxpayer yes. of that particular vehicle. Uh, there's no reason to have it be restricted to folks. You're so long right. and short of it, if you're interested, just let me know. Sounds good. Stephen, I wish I got you on here earlier, but I got to go to a break and we'll get you next week at 945, okay? I like you calling every week. Thank you so much. All right, we'll be right back. Though Bishop coming on after the after the news, so don't touch that dial. James Auto Center, we fix it right, guaranteed. Beep 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 beep. Yeah.